Bushcraft and Survival. Glad you could join me. The problem that I have found with, you know, showing different things is that we've got to keep it down to a short video length in order to be able to get, you know, for easier viewing and stuff. And some things are just better to show in person because there's a lot of information that goes into stone tools. It is not just grab a rock and then you know, sand it down, and that while wow, you've got yourself an axe, there's things to look for. There's specific types of rocks, different sounds that it makes, different feels that it has. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so there's a lot of information that has to be expressed. So if this video goes over 10 minutes, I apologize. I'm going to make it as quick as I can. Now, there's a major difference between getting something sent to you already pre-made and putting a stick to it and then showing how it's supposed to be used and actually grabbing the material yourself and molding it into the tool that you need to put it to you. So, let's just go ahead and start off with where to find a nice decent rock to use for stone tools. And it, the answer to that is actually a uh, crick bed. is an awesome place to find them. Now, you will find a lot of sandstone, lime, a lot of regular slate rock that aren't very good at all for stone tools. Most people know about flint. Most people know about obsidian. Some people don't know about lime because, well, when you think of lime, the first thing that you're thinking about is the stones that you find in your driveway. And you're right. <laughs> it would suck <laughs> as a stone tool. However, lime stone can be a very good stone tool if it has been in a, a location, an area, an environment deep within the earth for a long period of time long enough in a silica based area so it could quartalize quartalize in other words crystallize to a quartz like you know substance and that is an awesome stone to use for stone tools so I'm here in the creek right now and I'm going to go through and I'm going to look for specific types of rocks and stuff like that and once I find a rock that I'm going to be using. I'll be back. I'm not going to make you wait and all that stuff for me to find the rock. So when I find the rock, I'll bring it back and then we can go on to the next step of how to process it. Okay, I'm back. And I found the rock. Now there's a few things that you want to look at when you find the rock that you're wanting to use. Number one, does it have a high ting to it? when you hit it does it sound high pitched the other thing that you want to look at is if there's any cracks or fissures in it because you don't want any weaknesses in what you're going to be using now there's several different ways of processing this to get down to a usable piece I'm going to set that down while I explain that the first method is percussion the second method is pinpoint percussion. And the third is light percussion. Now the percussion is basically taking the uh, stone and just banging it up against another stone. And once you get it broke up into smaller pieces, then you can go into precise percussion. Precise percussion has to do with putting something on top where you want it, taking another rock, and hammering down, batoning if you will, down on it to get to a very specific shape. And then light percussion has to do with actually shaping it to the form that you're wanting. Now, 
with this big rock right here I need to find another rock that is just as hard as this rock and bust it up and I'll be back just as soon as I get that done I apologize for rushing through I'm just trying to get everything within but there are certain things that you want to look for and I'm trying to mention those as I go now right here I know that it's not going to focus in but as you can see bottom half broke off this broke off and I'm trying to show right here it broke off right there nice sharp edge throw that away nice sharp edge on that side nice sharp edge on that side it's a little thicker on this than it is on this right here I like this cutting surface right here it is very sharp and that is the thing about finding the proper stone if you find the proper stone and you break it off by breaking it it can shatter off into very sharp pieces and you can use this by itself to with your hand but if you want to cut down a larger tree with it then of course you would want to attach it to a handle right and so that's going to be the next part now there are a few things that I want to do with this right here before I attach it to the handle and that goes with the light for percussion see I'm wanting to shape this piece so that I can have some something to back it up on this side so that it doesn't slip out and I also want something to grip on the top here without cutting because it's sharp all the way around so that goes into light percussion and to do light percussion you take something really hard rounding off now I'm doing it up here I would normally use it down on my leg with some kind of padding to do this but that's more for shaping but you do want to have a complete control over it when you're doing this but I do like to have some kind of cloth or something like that in between because this is sharp and if you hold it wrong by doing this it can actually cut your hand so when doing this it's best to have some kind of protection for your hands all right and as I'm doing this I'm making it as straight as I can, parallel from one side to the other. Now on the back end, I'm also wanting to come down on it and flatten it up. And since that is a lot thicker, I'm actually going to use a stone over here. I'll be back. Okay, now I've shaped it. Now remember, I started off parallel with both sides. Now, the second step was I took it inside a little bit, all the way down to the other side before coming back out, and the back end is flush. So now, I can attach it to the handle, have something to grip it in the back, and the top, and the sides, with a specific latching, and we'll actually put it to use. I'll cut down a tree with it and show you how it works. Let's go. Okay. I have already done this part and found out that the battery was, or I'm sorry, the uh, recorder wasn't recording. My fault on that. So I'll just tell you what I did. I used the rock itself. You can see fibers. Maybe you can, maybe you can. I don't know if you can see. Fibers of the wood. I'm using an ash handle. The, uh, the piece of limb that I found was naturally like radius here, you know, curving, naturally like a hand uh, axe handle. 
So I went ahead and used that as the uh, bottom end. And then up here, I used the rock to split this down. I took the rock away. And I used the knot that I showed how to do in earlier videos, that, start, that uh, combination knot. Well, this right here starts off with a noose and then finishes up with a half hitch, a couple of them. And that prevents it from splitting any further. And then I used this right here with a rock to hammer down on this. And I used this piece of wood right here, which is actually a piece of walnut. I used this right here to put it where I wanted down in here to seat it up. And now the next step is just lashing it up. So I'm going to go ahead and lash it up. It's a cross latch is what it is. Now I don't know if anybody knows how to do a cross latch. I wasn't really doing a tutorial on that today. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and lash it up. And then I'll show that this right here will in fact cut down a tree. It's a good stone axe. And there it is. All ash too. And now you see this tree right here. I'm going to get down so you can see. Yep. all the way around this tree here as you see got that nice Stone tools are not as good as steel tools. That's the reason why that we've upgraded to them. But that is proof. And now, I want to show that it still has a sharp edge on it. It withstood all that. Cut down this tree right here. It still has a sharp edge on it stone tools. So there you have it folks. A stone axe. Very nice. And it worked. You cut down that tree. And yeah, it's a little harder to cut it down than with a an actual steel axe but uh it did the job and it'll do another one so that's step by step on how to look for how to process and how to make a stone axe but that's going to be it for today i hope that you enjoyed and i hope you learned something if you did smash the like button if you're new please subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell, comment, share, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one.